Okay, welcome back to the big board. We're looking at Vietnam from GMT. I was having a chat with Ralph, uh, one of the developers on the game, and we were, we were. I was just communicating with him about what my experience was with First Valley, First Valley, First Volley. Uh, it's a, it's a two-turn scenario, and I got through most of the first turn. And I'd reset it once because I, I made some mistakes with uh, combat that I wanted to re revisit and see if that changed the approach and the tactics and the strategy uh, that I was using for the VC, and it did. And then uh, I was also then starting to wonder about the efficacy and the capabilities of, where are they? Where, where are our, our NVA boys all the way up on the border up there? What the you know their capabilities were against the uh, Arvin uh, and uh, even against the uh, against the Marines. Now we haven't had a, a direct conflict against the Marines yet, but I, I will probably get to that in turn two, and we're going to uh, I've reset this and we're going to replay it because uh, the way some of these th things work with uh, with the VC, there are some things that you want to. Make sure you do <clears throat> during combat. Now, one of the interesting things with the rules is that the rule book, as far as movement, combat, and operations are concerned, and supporting infrastructure, <clears throat> the artillery in the air and stuff like that, it's pretty straightforward, uh, and the rules are fairly short, but it's, they're very dense, and there's, there's a lot of little factoids and elements in them that you need to make sure you are cognizant of when you're playing, yeah? And so, try, I'm trying to get that, that sort of that feel for the, the operational tempo for both sides and the, uh, the relative ineffectiveness of both sides, uh, depending on what you're trying to do, uh, is also something that it, you've got to sort of tease that out of the rules, yeah? Now, uh, so, so now, ignoring all that, then that ignores all of the campaign aspects, all the population influence and political influence, and the 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 back back and forth there, and all the reinforcements and replacement points and stuff like that. So, setting all of that aside, we're really just dealing with what I would call the operational side of things uh, for the game with this situation that we're playing here. I can't set up the full game at the moment just because of space constraints. So uh, there's that, right? We'll do that once we move into the the new house, and we'll we'll have at it at some point for sure because there's enough in here to make it worthwhile. But what I wanted to do <clears throat> was to look at a couple of different things because uh, I you know I've reset this and we're gonna now I've got a different idea about how I want to approach things for both sides. And I wanted to refer to a couple of things that I mentioned in the blog post I wrote about combat and and the the tuning of your support that you apply to a particular turn uh, or particular operation, I should say. You want to make sure that there are some things that you want to consider, which I've mentioned. But there's there are other factors that I had mentioned at the end of the. A blog post that I wanted to dig into and I may end up writing it up as well but I thought I'd just do the video for the time being and in particular it's retreats and these pursuit of oh, these pursuit allowances which you can't see <laughs> over here on the right uh, so let me see if I can just oh, I guess I can just hold this here but one of the things that's interesting uh, when you get into a situation and let's just uh, let's you ruin the surprise, but let's. We're going to attack this sec. This whoa, hey now, easy there, big boy. Let's just zoom in here. We'll have a little little example on the fly. I'm going to attack this guy doing a search and destroy mission, and we're going to move these four units in. And it just so happens those four units are all standard regular uh, VC units. I've got two political sections somewhere in here, and I've just sort of placed the units randomly to enable solo play so I'm not uh, second guessing myself and all that sort of nonsense. So <clears throat> um, we're going to come into this attack with two, four, six, eight to one, right? It'll be an eight to one attack and it's going to be in a, uh, uh, that's a town. I think they call that yellow dot is a town. Yes, a town. 
but there's also going to be two regional forces there. So I'm actually going to have a strength of three. So it's going to be eight versus three. It's going to be a two to one attack, right? Uh, the, the regional forces exist in all towns, all cities and things like that. And uh, we're going to use, we use them to uh, sort of boost up the, the strength of these forces. So here's, here's where it starts to get a little interesting. So we would do this, what did I say, two to one attack. And I've got two support here that just happen to be here, the artillery, uh, the sort of organic artillery that goes with those two particular VC battalions. I guess they're Let's not talk about what type of equipment it is because I don't know. Uh, but uh, we can imagine it's some sort of small caliber. Uh, they're taking on this little uh, Arvin, ugh, Arvin battalion that has no support, right? So I have the opportunity uh, to allocate some support uh, to this once these guys announce an, an operation. I could say, as the allies, hey, I'm going to allocate some uh, artillery or some. Uh, some air. I'm not going to do that in this particular instance, right? So I, let's say I go through that, that attack and I said it was a two to one, right? So that means I'm going to get a plus two to the die roll, uh, less the minus one for the uh, little township uh, defensive capability. So it's going to be a net plus one. I'm going to roll a die and it's going to, let's just, it's going to be a five. And uh, so I'm on a, I've got eight factors attacking one factor. So let's look at what happens to the one factor first. So the one factor is all the way over on the left-hand column, and I'm going to show you in a sec, right? And I said there was a net plus one, but I get to add the the, the attacker's uh, uh, support, so it's going to make it a three, which interestingly, uh, I'm probably going to have to zoom out a little bit, so bear with me. Do that. There we go. So. First column goes from 1 to 3.5, right? So I said I roll a 5 plus 1. So there'll be one step loss for the defender. Now, the defender, because he didn't lose more than his combat value, can uh, elect to lose an Arvin replacement point, of which he has 18 in this scenario, and we drop it down to 17, and he's good to go. Now, uh, the... Consequently, let's look at the, the result for the attacker. The attacker has eight factors attacking. We don't include the artillery support because uh, that, that's the support, not the combat factors. And there's no support from the uh, defender. So I said I had eight factors and I rolled a five. I went up one to a six. I'm gonna be on the eight to 13.5 column. I'm gonna get a one, two result. Let's see if I can find that again here. So I'm, the VC are going to lose one. So let's just make a note. They're going to lose one factor. Now, I can lose a step or I can also lose one of my VC replacements. So we'll do that. We move the replacement marker down. Now, the other thing that happens here, six, we go across plus two on the pursuit. So these chaps could, if they wanted to, retreat. They could go one, two, however many the retreat move. It's a, I think it's my full movement uh, uh, allowance. So they could retreat. There may be an incidental attack along the way and all that sort of fun stuff. But we want to focus in on what happens if we don't retreat. That's what I'm interested in at the moment here. So uh, I'm not retreating. Uh, if I was retreating, uh, these guys would get that plus two. Uh, pursuit factor, these guys would get a plus one, so they would have a net three movement points. They could chase these guys down and try and attack them. Uh, these guys get a zero. They would only have two movement points to try and chase down these guys and continue the attack because I've, I've got my little target hex here that I've declared it in a search and destroy operation, I guess, if I was running you through the full play cycle, right? There are very cool flow charts that show all this and detail it all. So you can download all that crap and read it yourself and look at it yourself if you're interested. Trust me, this is roughly how it works. This is not a tutorial, just some observations. Now, because these guys elected to stand, where where we want to take this hex and get the VP for it, so we want to attack them again. So we roll a die again, and this time I only roll a two, which is probably not as great, right? Uh, I'm going to get a net plus one again. Let's see if I can just put this here, and I can rotate the camera a little bit. 
I'm going to get a net plus one, but I've still I've also got that pursuit for allowance that we get to add, right? So I got a two plus one is a three plus two for the pursuit uh, is a five. So I'm now up to the five on this zero zero. So no losses for these guys. But I go across to here. Where are we? Uh, what did I say? Eight to thirteen. Uh, no loss for the attacker. Once again, a plus two on the pursuit if we. Chunka chunka over to here. Let me see a six. I said a six, didn't I? Or I said a five. Plus two. So now, once again, at the end of that combat, we've got the choice. Do I want to retreat or and, and, and try my luck? Or do I want to uh, stand and let these guys attack again? And they attack again, they're going to get a plus two again. So I'm going to... We'll, we'll, we will stand. We want to keep this village, town, whatever... Oh dear, so now we've rolled a five plus the one for uh, the net for the other modifiers plus two for uh, the pursuit, All right? So I said, um, let me just make sure I'm doing this right here. Five plus, that's going to make it an eight, a net eight. So one to three, the, now I'm, you know what? I realized I think I might have done wrong here. Let me just pause here for one second. Okay, good. The thing that I was concerned about was that I was not allowing, not accounting for the regional forces in the actual strength as we looked at the uh, result here. And you don't do that. So I had got that correct. That's nice for a change. <laughs> I'm uh, sometimes and often in error. All right. Uh, so let me just recap where we were. We rolled a five. This is the third attack that we were doing because I, I paused the camera for quite a few minutes here to check the rule. Uh, rolled a five. It's a net plus one plus the two for the pursuit makes it an eight. So we get onto the eight column and it's a, it's a, a one. So uh, and, and then we add the two for the support uh, from the artillery. So it only goes up to a three. There's a zero, zero, no loss again for these guys. Now let's check as we go across here though, it was eight to 13, no loss for the attacker. So you can see that this is gonna potentially continue. And let's see what would, uh, I would need to get up to a nine. So I would need to roll a six here. So this was actually the third. Oh no, that was the losses, right? If I roll the six, and that last, actually that last roll I said was an eight, right? The next attack is gonna get me a plus four, right? A plus four in the, on the pursuit allowance. Now, at that point, knowing this, would these folks want to retreat? Now that they're in a little bit more of a dire straits about um, potentially taking a loss, because look, we could, if I, if I did roll a six and I got a plus four, that'd be an 11. We'd go all the way up to an 11. Uh, well, look at, interestingly enough, a 10 would have been a better result. Uh, uh, would have been a two, two losses, which would mean that we would have to lose, physically lose this unit. Because once you take losses, have losses that are higher than the combat value, the dude's dead. You can't just, you know, use a replacement point. Uh, if I had ended up with a nine, I would have taken one, one loss and I could use a replacement point and hold my ground. But anyway, I, I didn't do that. I got a one, I uh, got a net 11, and we go across to here, no loss for the for the, the attacker, it says zero three. And then here it's a, uh, if I had got a 10, it would have been one loss. I would have had to take another, another loss here, or uh, potentially as a nine, it would have been no losses. So you can see that there's a, a little bit of, manipulation of uh, or decision making that needs to happen around how long do I try and hold a position? How long do I want to keep attacking that position, accumulating or using up my replacement points for those for those units, right? So that's interesting in of itself. If we then look at the NBA, Whoops, I nearly knocked my water over. We have much stronger units. They have seven combat factors, which means two things. One, they're going to pick up some better odds against uh, some of these, particularly if they end up going head-to-head -head against 
the smaller uh, <coughs> battalions, right? And uh, they're going to uh, potentially also be very difficult to kill off because it's going to be really, really hard to get s more than seven hits. You're going to have to bring a huge amount of force and enemy su and, and support to generate that, that type of loss, right? So, so that's an interesting little dynamic in, a, in of itself. And I know this is video is getting quite long, so hopefully I haven't lost you along the way yet, but there's a lot of challenges there. And then you've got these interesting little uh, smaller uh, independent batteries that can be, if they're well positioned, that's got a range of four, they can potentially, sorry, uh, that is does not have a range of four. It has a strength of four. Uh, that is a, one, a range of one. Uh, but you've got these larger uh, battalions of artillery that have one, two, or potentially three hex range, and each hex is like six miles, uh, that uh, you can position them correctly and they can support a significant number of units and they can continue to support them uh, through the entire turn and support all operations. So they become a super powerful element in the game. Uh, so there was that that I wanted to, the point I wanted to make there. And then one other thing. Yeah, so choosing the, where you use the limited air support that you have and, and how you, and how much of that you use to impact uh, a, a combat result is going to be, very significant. The, the so so there's a lot of uh, a lot of layering going on here in terms of the the thought patterns that have to go into it. When you look at these turns, you uh, and these these hexes and these operations and the things that go on with these these uh, pursuit allowances, you're like, well, why? I was thinking, well, why do we get that? Well, we're dealing with very small units and very large hexes. So a battalion covering a uh, a here uh, at supporting a six mile hex there's a lot of maneuver going on so we're, we're conducting operations over you know, over a significant period of time you know it's a season so three four months and we're uh, we're using small units to execute those things so it's not just a set piece battle that's occurring it's a dynamic engagement between parties and particularly if folks ended up you know, end up saying, well, you know, I am going to retreat. I'm going to use my movement allowance and retreat. These guys are trying to surround them and interdict areas around the the enemy so that it costs them more, so they can't retreat as far, so they can have at them and, and beat on them. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on in a in a given operation within the operations phase. So very fascinating. I mean, just. Don't get overly excited about this game, right? Because it's not particularly solo, solo friendly. So you're going to have to do a little brain bifurcation or do what I have done potentially and just use it as, uh, you know, you put these guys down randomly and just deal with what happens. Uh, like it would have been nice here to have had four units with uh, the artillery support, right? Uh, versus just the two. Would have changed the... Uh, would have moved the combat results from the three and a half column to the four to seven point five column, which has much less, is much more deadly for for the defender. So, lots going on here. Now that I've messed all this up, I need to put it all back together. But we're gonna, uh, as I said, we've reset this, so we're gonna execute on that. And I'm, in fact, I might keep this as my results for the operation there, since they were, you know, relatively beneficial to the. Uh, to the allies. All right. I uh, thought I'd share that with you. Talk to you soon. We'll uh, try and get some more content out in the next uh, few days or so. Ciao.